Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm happy to have you all here. Um, I'm Connie Anderson, and this is Ken Hollands. I'm not sure if you heard both of us before. Um, I'm from Univox, and Ken is from Ampetronic. And we'll try to guide you through a very basic uh, loop listening quality, see what kind of problem you can have, how, what you should look for, how you should measure. We do have some a basic uh, instrument loop listeners that you can use. Um, I, I, I think you, but we, we have them in different places there. We will ship them out later on. I will start doing some introduction of the whole scheme there. And I think this is a quite an important thing. So you can put questions actually uh, on each slide if you like to, because it needs to be clear. We do have a problem uh, with all these five different loop and in the little time we had to set it up. So, so it, it's uh, a thing we a challenge we have to overcome. And I think it will work fine. Uh, in, in Scandinavia and in Europe, um, in UK, uh, all the there is a lot of problems with loop systems, but a lot of loop systems that work very, very fine. Uh, but the one that doesn't work have there are certain reasons for it, and we would like to explain that for you. Most important thing, and that you should tell them by a sign, it should be told to people that this is a loop fitted area. So the signage is very important. You should tell this area is looped. And preferably it could be detailed. It could be like a seating list. Uh, this area does not work. It's not covered. In our opinion, in, 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 uh, in Europe anyway, is that all the seatings should be covered by a loop system. You, you're not supposed, you, you should not discriminate anyone uh, with, with having a, a seat that doesn't work. Sometimes it's technical difficult but uh, to do that, but the signage is very important. Uh, and I just discovered, uh, I just said about the site map to indicate what's covered. Um, another thing that's very, very common is that you enter a room with a hearing instrument and you turn it into T position and then you say, to the presentation like me, the loop doesn't work. And they answer, well, it should work. And, and well, uh, it, it doesn't. Well, can't you hear? No, it doesn't work, as, as far as I understand. And then they get to talk to one of the technicians behind there, and they, the loop doesn't work. Well, well, it should work. It should work. And no one really knows. That's one of the basic things. So the most important thing is to inform people how the loop is working, to turn it on, the obvious thing, and put, have the input level. In this room, we have a, a typical mixer, and it's so easy for anyone to just fiddle with it a little, so the loop doesn't work. The acoustic, everyone will hear and, and, and talk about and, and say that we can't hear. So it, it's very important to, to, uh, to, to inform the operator or, or, or the owner of the premises how it, do, how it does work. And talking about the standards, we talked about the standards uh, before in the lunch a little and, and uh, about showing some sound examples. But the most common thing is that the field strength is too low. That's one of the most common problems in loop, if there are problems. The frequency response is poor. It could be combined, really, these things. The signals to noise ratio is too low. That means the background noise uh, could be too high or the level could be too low. I'd like to f say the signal to noise ratio because that's, in, that's what we th should think about. And microphones again, it's, it's the microphones is one of the most important things. My personal opinion is that we should have a, a headset microphone. That's very, very good. Uh, you don't have variations like this when I talk there. There's a new talker coming up and someone standing here. You have different frequency response, different levels, many, many things. So actually a headset microphone is one of the most important things. But all these should be checked. A loop system is not better than its input, of course. And very common thing, input could be distorted. So too high input or too low input, that's one of the key issues. You have 
LED meters for that. We come back to that later on. Um, and so don't let this happen in your community. It's 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 a it's an important thing to get this forward. All these things. It's not difficult, really. But it's a level, the frequency response, the signage, and someone should know how it works. It's not that difficult. Now. What we try to accomplish here that you should learn and to understand all the, some of the basic thing. First of all, we would like you to be able to demonstrate how to complete uh, a basic check. You call it a basic assessment check of a loop system. We, ha we have a, a paper for that, uh, which will be given to you that you will be able to fill in. And uh, you will also be able to demonstrate when we give you the loop listeners, how you should use them, what you should look for. Uh, they are simple devices, but you can actually use them um, for fault finding and, and et cetera, et cetera. But they are not, you, you, you can't certify a loop with them. But you can tell if a loop is working or not, and the basic problem if there are, is any, if there are any. When, when you find a problem, I mean, you should be able to describe the whole thing. That's, of course, a basic thing. Uh, really, I mean, it could be like if there's a big hum, background noise, you should be able to tell. It doesn't fulfill the standard, really. We, we, can, we can hear it. How can you do? What can you do with it? If the input level is too low, you should be able to tell what will you do if the input level is too low, etc. But here, for all the demonstrations we have, we have five different loops. We will show you show them to you later on. Uh, we, we, you're not supposed to adjust anything like that. You're supposed to listen and try to find out what is the difference, really. Okay, that's my part of it. And okay, so th this afternoon, whilst you're going to hopefully learn something, you should also be having a little bit of fun. We're going to have to get you all into groups of five later on, to, and you're going to go around and evaluate a number of different loop systems with a number of different thoughts. Um, I need you to listen closely to, to what I'm going to explain now, because I'll be talking about the various uh, 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 faults or problems that you might see with an installation. Some of those are faults in terms of the way the equipment is set up. Some of those faults are more about the facility. <laughs> so the first thing, then, is signage. Um, with any loop system, if it's not signed, if there's no information about the loop system being there, then of course nobody's going to know it's there, nobody's going to be able to use it. So it's very important that there is some signage. When you see these checklists that you'll be filling in, in you'll see one of the first things you have to do is uh, check for, for, to see whether there's, the system has been uh, correctly identified as being present. And it's not just about signage, you need a map. In, in many installations, you find that it's not the full area that is covered. Um, you may have been in the, in the ballroom last night, which we, which we looped, but uh, in terms of what we were asked to cover, it was smaller than the area where people were sitting. Um, there was a bit of confusion there. So some people may have been actually sitting outside the loop um, because the map we was given was different to the map that uh, they actually used to put the tables out. So you check to see that there is good signage. You also check to see that uh, the areas that are covered by the loop are signed and there's an information map at the front of the facility to tell people where and where they and where they cannot receive a good loop signal. And you'll indicate that on the form that you fill in or you complete. The next thing um, is going to be a little bit more difficult to, to do in uh, sort of this situation because what we're asking you to do is to evaluate whether the staff on the premises actually know what the system is, how the system works, and perhaps how to switch the system on, etc., uh, so that uh, you can be confident that even when you're not there, that the system is maintained and <coughs> operational. So when you go to a venue, you will ask the, uh, to see the people that operate the system and just ask them a few questions about the system, you know, how they use it, when they use it, whether it's switched on and if they can show you the controls. And that will give you some sort of confidence as to whether the facility really knows what they're doing with their particular induction loop system. So many systems do not uh, work because the facilities don't actually understand how to switch them on 
or perhaps even worse, they don't realise that they need a microphone input on them. We have situations in the UK, nice expensive induction loop system, or uh, <coughs> depends who it is, um, and they complain or people complain that it's not working, you go to site and you find that there's no microphone. Obvious to us, but not obvious to everybody. The next thing, in, in, when you're speaking to these people, you should try and see if they, they have a, a main maintenance log and a maintenance record to make sure that they're regularly checking the system. They ought to have a, a logbook which shows that they're checking the system at least once a week or once, uh, and once a month at, at worst case, and perhaps checking the, having a full maintenance check on the system every, every year. If they don't have such a logbook, it's advised, it's good practice to advise them to get one, make sure they're checking the system. As Connie said, with a, an audio system, a, an acoustic system, everybody checks the system every day that they, they go into the venue because they hear it. With the induction loop system, then it's only you guys that uh, find out whether it's, not, whether it's working or not on, on that particular occasion. So it's important that they also have a maintenance procedure, something else that you check on your list. The next parameter then is um, to check that the input's connected. I, I mentioned about the microphone. Um, it's obvious if a microphone's missing, um, you won't be able to see it. But sometimes they're using some other audio feed. The best way you can check that they have an audio input to the system is that on any of the amplifiers, in uh, good quality induction loop amplifiers, you'll find that there's a um, some LED indication that will either stay on or will flicker and, and that gives you uh, indication that there's a good signal going into the system. So as I said those three parameters you're going to check off on your on your um, checklist here. The next thing is about how does the system sound? So what we're going to be looking for is, is, is popping and, and crackling, cracking noises, they're all degrading the, the signal performance. Um, so we will rate the amount of popping and cracking according to a scale, and it's hopefully self-explanatory when you come to see the form. In terms of evaluating the sound, we will be listening for, uh, on checking for, the position of the microphones. So are the microphones actually in the right place? Too often I go to site and they use boundary mics mounted on the ceiling. So they have a microphone up there mounted on the ceiling and that's like me standing over here talking to you. I said, that's like me standing over there talking to you. They, you if the microphones are in the wrong place, they're not going to pick up the person speaking. And so you're going to have, you might have a good system, but it's not going to deliver any intelligibility. Microphones are very important in, in terms of any induction loop system. The next thing you're going to be listening for is distortion. Um, obviously, if the signal is distorted, as uh, Darth Vader, um, when he speaks, we all know what that sounds like. That's kind of what you're going to be listening for today, to see if there's any distortion on the signal. If there's distortion, of course, the intelligibility is lost. So um, you're not really going to be understand what's being said, and you're not getting the best performance of the system that's been installed. As I said, um, there's a checklist that you're going to go through and you're going to rate the performance under those three categories um, on a scale of, well, well, really sort of how good it is. And, and finally then, we need to check that the, the field strength, the, the volume of the system is uh, sufficient. And clearly, we're looking at a field strength of 400 milliamps per meter. That's the loudness of the system, and um, the way you're going to check that is by using the loop monitors that we'll hand out to you. There's going to be um, 13, I think my company's given 13 systems out, and, and Connie will be giving another, another 12 systems out on today's session to those people that have registered. So if you get an Ampatronic um, loop receiver, it will look like this. To switch it on, you have to plug the headphones into the headphone socket. If you don't plug the headphones in, it is not switched on. Even if you're not going to use the headphones, they have to be plugged in, I'm afraid. Once you've plugged it in, then uh, these lights will indicate the field strength. So if you get uh, 
a combination of a green and yellow light on, you know that you have a, um, a very good field strength. If you have just a, a yellow light flickering, then the field strength is OK, it's acceptable, but it's, slight, it's probably on the low side. And if the green light stays on all the time, then the system actually fails. Now, in the boxes, you will find there are some instructions of how to, to use this thing, but also, On the back of the receiver, there are some, um, there's a schematic which tells you which light should be on. So whilst you're holding it in front of you, you'll be able to tell whether you've got the right lights on and it tells you whether it's a good signal, a weak signal, or a signal that's too high. If, sorry, a question? Okay, I don't use, earphones because I don't hear. Did you say you have to plug in the earphone for the device to work, but that we will be getting information by visual? Yes. <laughs> so, no lights on. Plug it in, light on. So now I'll pass you over to Connie, he'll explain very briefly how the, uh, the Unibox system works. Once you get your, your loop receiver, then um, if, you, if you're not understanding, you can always ask us to sort of how to operate it before you go and start testing. Right, and I think this is for the whole thing. You will go around to different loops and, and we must help you. And there is always thousands of questions coming up. And so it, it, we should have this communication all the time. I think that's very important. Now, we have two listen, listeners, loop listeners, really. One from Ampatronic and one from Univox. And uh, this is the one from, uh, from us. You just hang it around here if you like to. Um, I explain it on the screen a little. Um, uh, you have an on-off LED that indicates that it's, it's uh, actually on. You turn it on off, let's see if I can find that. You have the built-in little speaker, but you can use a headphone or just one ear headphones if you like. Uh, so speaker or the headphone or, or some other, uh, just one ear, you, you hang this little speaker on, on the outer ear. Okay, you have a tone control uh, that reduces low frequency if you would like to. And you have a volume control. It's, it's in here. It says volume on, on it, so it's it's quite easy to understand. Um, there is a one LED uh, place, so to speak, and there is uh, a green one. Will tell you received the, f the full 400 milliamps per meter, and if it's turned to jello, uh, it's, it's like this: green then it complies to the IC standard. You will reach 400 milliamps per meter. If it's yellow, it, it works, but it's half the level as the IC. But it's, it's good to use still, so it's minus 6 dB. And if it doesn't light at all, you are below the standard also as well. And it, it probably is not a very good loop system. You, yes, do you have a question? Can you use a mono and neck loop with that? Well, you can use a, a neck loop, but there is no use for it because it just picks up the magnetic field, actually. So, if I mean, you, you're transmitting a loop, so there is no use of picking up and then transmit a loop again. But, yeah. Did you, did you understand? Mm -hmm. Okay. The wire that you put behind your ear, does that behave like the silhouette. That's, I think, what the question is. Uh, okay. Well, I see. Well, you, you do have a magnetic leakage if you use this one. You do have a magnetic leakage, uh, really. But that's of no use, really. It's very little. So, so you should use reloops, so to speak. Uh, so that's basic. Green, yellow, and no lights in, in one position. There are several like these. Uh, okay. Um, is the signal good enough in the center of the loop? Uh, as in the edge, you, 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 you should look for that. That's an important thing to know if, if the variation is, 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 is 
a problem or not, uh, and and you, you could do that with the with the listener with the LEDs on, on both of, of of the listeners. You can find that out, and you can see if it's fail or doesn't fail, if it complies or not complies. But it again, it's I must stress it is a simple test, but it's in many cases good enough to find out if it's working. Out. So once you've gone through all the, all the tests that uh, are on this sheet, at the very end, there's the conclusion. And that's the conclusion that you're going to deliver to the facilities manager. So you'll look down your test sheet, see which colours you've ticked. If you've ticked something that's red, you're going to <coughs> indicate that as the system has failed. If you've ticked something uh, that is yellow, then you're going to indicate that the system is OK to use, but it could do with some improvements. And it's not necessarily just the system, the operation of the system. It might be that you found that they had no loop signage, for example, so you might fail them on that, on that particular uh, basis. Um, and then if you tick, obviously, if, if everything is green, everything passes, then you give them flying colours and you tick the green and uh, that's uh, sort of, they've got a great system, you let them know. So, um, that said, we're now uh, going to organise you. Why is it clear? Was it the signal clear? I thought it was or was it down or not? Oh, okay. So you're hearing that way? You hear a buzz? Okay. Uh-oh. So sometimes the music you will have the signal clear. Sometimes the music you will have the strong one. Sometimes the weak music you will have the less indication. So therefore, it's important to stay a while and listen. What kind of signal is it? Maybe it's a weak character music. First of all, this is <laughs> if you try to tell what their voice is actually saying, you got to work. Down. Really? You might even talk to them. I'm trying to see if I can get yellow to come on. Uh, yes, but then you have to be lower down to see if it's working. So one thing we're trying to say is this is the working is to be this close to the virus. First of all, this is artificial. Find out you really need to be in the middle of the line. It's quiet to me now. It is, but do you have a meter? I hear music. Yeah, I hear music, but the signal is too loud. Yeah. And I guess it's one of the yeah, so, but in order to find out for this model, you actually need to be staying in the middle to find the level and look at the LEDs. If you look at the computer um, screen and look at the signal, the green one here, uh, this is a the signal that varies through the time. So when you have a, a program signal, you have a very different level all the time. It's changing all the time, rapidly. Like my voice, I'm silent, and some of the letters or the sounds are weaker, some are the higher. So these meters, they are measuring the peaks, the short peaks, and they try to track if, like you look, uh, like if you look at the, the the green one, so you can see it will flicker, and sometimes during a period of time you will have a peak. So therefore, when you are testing a loop system, you can't go in, put a random signal, and just do it very very quickly, like five seconds, and say okay, working or not working. You you have to be there and see if there are peaks, etc. So that's an important thing to understand. Is there anything more I should say for general? Yes. Uh, uh, yes, please. If you put on a sinusoidal, sinusoidal <laughs> signal, right. would that be a constant signal that you would see less variation in that? Very good question. If you put a sine wave or sinusoidal wave, it is constant. The problem is when you do that is 
that's not the real signal. Yeah. There's no one speaking in the microphone and all that. So for this simple instrument, and this, it's good to have the real signal. And you should test not just a microphone. Of course, if no one is talking on the microphone, you will not have any indication. But if they're using line levels, like the MP3 plays we have, we should test all of them and look at, at, at the meters. Uh, anything else I should say? Yes. Um, these are artificial loops. It's different. We would like to do bigger loops and do testing. But we have pre-recorded distortions uh, high frequency loss, a hum, and all that. We, we have to pre-record that. So it, it's a bit difficult. Uh, these are very artificial small loops. So you have to be in the middle. And also they are more sensitive to height variation than in real life. So I think you all discovered that. You, when I try to walk around, you, you lower, you can see the feel. It's very, very much, really. But uh, that's what we can do. We try to explain the reason. I, my suggestion is that I will tell you uh, the different numbers and tell you what kind of signals they are and if they are approved or not approved or what kind of faults there, there are. Uh, if I start backwards, number five, way out, uh, that is actually, it did have a, um, it, it did, could anyone say something about it? How about the signage? Yeah? Mm -hmm. Number five had a sign. Number five had a sign, right. Yeah. So in that respect is good. How about the sound quality? Any, any? Someone says it's good, someone says it's bad. It was, it was weak. It was weak. Yes, it is weak, but it's, according to the meters, it's minus 6 dB, so it's usable. But I would say it's weak uh, as well. It's not the optimum anyway. Right. But what is actually was, and that's the reason why the meter shows a little better than you distinguish by yourself, high frequency cut. We cut the high frequency very much, and that then you will hear it badly, but the level is actually reasonably good, but for low frequency. So that was a tricky one. That was a tricky one. Shame on me. <laughs> okay. Number four. Um, that was actually weak, but reasonable, okay. It's not, not. How about the signage? There wasn't any. There, everyone, okay. Was there anyone that you can ask for question and help and and uh, did they no one there? Okay. And number three, that was a very high distortion there, very very pre-recorded high distortion. May I ask, did you hear that? I think we did. I think I think we did. I yeah. think we did. Okay. Yeah. The, the, it, it sounds like if you're not used to listen to distortion, this kind of distortion, what it, the level is all the same all the same level, and you can just <laughs> you can hear the sound like that. Did we get that? Did we hear that? We had, we had poor, we yeah, had yeah, poor yeah. sound quality. We could hear the sound, but we had poor sound oh. quality. It wasn't, it wasn't, you couldn't hear the lyrics. But you, you can hear the sound, but, but it was poor quality. That's, yes, that's right, that's good. So that's another important thing. Even perhaps you can have a good level, and you can measure. Uh, it could still be distorted. So that's an, that's an important thing to understand. And distortion can come from many different things. Too high input on the stage, not following the, the, the setup instruction. But it's not your problem. You will, you will see it doesn't work. You just go and say that. that that's all. And, and the installer should make a correction. Number two, that was just a weak signal, really. And it was a different kind of material, different. Yeah, okay. So, and probably you will, each of you, you will hear it differently because it was music and different kind of music. I, actually, one, one thing that's happening in, 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 in number three, it was that it shut itself off. The signal, the MP3 player, shut itself off. So some of you may have indicated no input signal, actually. But um, just a, that's just a remark. And then we have number one. Sorry, yes, please. I would not suggest that somebody with a severe, profound hearing loss try and do that test for the distortion, because 
I, I, okay, you suggest that, that a person with, with, with profound uh, hearing loss should not do the high quality tests. I, I agree on that, I agree on that. It, it, it's a bit difficult to do that. But on the other hand, that's the end result. If you don't hear well and you have used hearing loop, and some loops, they work fine. I had to use somebody with good hearing. Okay, you have to use someone with good hearing. Oh, well, that's good. That's, that, that's um, what do you say that in it? It's, um, you, you solve the problem, but in your own way. Good. Okay, so number one loop. Yes. How does an audiologist not hearing impaired test the clarity? Um, well, by listening, I would say. Listening to what? They have no teak oil. Well, they, well, if they don't have anything to listen, they can't listen. No. That, that's uh, so, but they should have something to listen with. Yes. What the audiologist does? Yeah. Isn't this one? Can use one of these. Yeah. Yes, you can use one of these. To listen? Yeah, to, to listen. listen to the T coil. That's right. Okay. That's right. Right. That's right. That's a good thing. You, you. You, then you check the level also. But it's good. It's an important question, actually, because you, uh, as you have heard during the day, you you will. It's an important question because, it, it, as you heard during the day, you can program the hearing instrument quite much, and it will that will increase all the time. So um, maybe in the, in the next few years, you will have he hearing instruments that will that you can change maybe five or six different kinds of settings. So you, then. Each person could try out which one is the best for this particular situation. Okay, number one, the last one. Look over here. Uh, any reaction? Good, 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 good. Yeah, so that's the only one actually that passed fully, uh, really. You have good level, uh, etc. But on the other hand, you do have, the because it's so small, you do have difference in sitting and standing position. Um, but we consider that as a good loop system. No sign, no sign and the staff didn't know anything. Good, good. No signage. <laughs> so it's good. <laughs> Sorry? I tried my best. He tried his best, yes, that's right. <laughs> she interviewed uh, many, uh, some of us all the time, and, and, and if we did a test, how often did we test the loop system? And I said, well, 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 I, I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, so, uh, but uh, a good answer would be, I test it every time there's a performance before that. And, and, and uh, that, I think that's an important thing, trying to urge people to do that. In fact, we're trying to, into the standard, to f get it mandatory to, to, this is a suggestion only, but to have, to, to have a, um, um, a, an indicator that is fixed, yes. installed. And I think you would like that very much as well, because that is a typical basic problem for loop system. Uh, no one knows if that it really work. But if you have a signage with an LED in the actual installation, and you can find the level, you say, it doesn't work. It should work. It doesn't work, we can see that. Yes, you were first. Yeah. No, I, I was just curious, um, once the system is set up and working, how long, um, how long before performance um, would a testing, uh, testing regime take? In other words, um, uh, uh, venues might not want to spend a half an hour testing. Okay. To make sure. Okay. I, I, I translate this. Uh, the, the, the question is, is like this: is how long do you need to test uh, that the system is working? And that, that once it's set up. Once it's set up, really. Well, very, very quickly. Just look yeah. at the LED and listen. It takes 10 seconds once it's set up. I mean, you're just doing a basic test. Right. You, you know how much it is spread on all that. So that's going to cut it to a close, I think. Okay, we need to cut it to close, indeed. Uh, one more question. Um, yeah. well, I've got a question that probably neither of you can answer, but possibly someone else in the audience can. Uh, we, were, we were noticing that there was signage or not signage, but I'm questioning whether that signage was in compliance with the ADA regulations in this country. I don't think it was, and that's the reason I'm wondering if we were supposed to judge that or just the presence of the signage. 
Uh, okay, the signage it has different standard. It has an international standard. It's Etsy standard, and this one complies with that. But I know na na nationally it's a difference. Really, and, and and there's no minimum or maximum size in, in those standards. No, standard. no actually not. In the ADA, there is. Uh, oh really? Okay. Okay. Good to. I didn't know that. Okay. Good. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. I'm so sorry. We'll have to close now because we're running off to the bus. Thank you very much for all your help. Very good work. <laughs>